point, this is cast about your acute kidney injury. Still, we are under urinal and urinary problems. Yan. So, from the word itself, acute kidney injury, alam na natin no, that there's a condition of the kidney, there's a problem in the kidney here that's not chronic in nature. So, it's acute and the kidney is malfunctioning here. And that's correct. So, kapag sinabi natin acute, basically, I know that it's already on our mind that acute is less than 6 months. That's according to the fundamentals of nursing and that's correct actually. But there's more to that as we go along discussing this condition. Okay, kapag sinabi natin kapatid na acute kidney injury, there's a rapid loss or abrupt loss of kidney function from renal cell damage. So, tama naman tayo doon. Okay, so there's a rapid loss. So, sobrang mabidis uh, ang kidney uh, function loss natin dito because of renal cell damage. So, the problem is um, there is a problem with our kidneys and it can be caused by various causes as we go along mamaya. I-discuss po natin yan isa-isa. Okay, so mabilisan siya. Again, the word there is rapid. Okay, it's abrupt in nature, kapatid. So, what are the causes ka pala of your acute kidney injury or AKI? So, may tatlo tayong main causes, your pre-renal causes, your intra-renal causes, and then your post-renal causes. So, alam na natin from the suffixes and prefixes that we have here. So, renal, when you say renal, kapatid, you talk about the kidney. At kapag sinabi natin pre, we're talking before, the kidney. Intra-renal, kapag sinabi natin intra, kapatid, it's within or inside of it. Okay, kapag sinabi naman natin post, alam natin yan, that's after. Okay? Okay? So, three causes we have here, pre-renal causes, intra-renal causes, and then your post-renal causes. Kapatid, kapag sinabi natin pre-renal causes, okay? So, anything that happened before the kidney, so we must be familiar with the anatomy of our kidney no so anything that happens any condition that's uh, happening before the kidney okay tawag natin sa condition na yan which have co uh, precipitated our acute kidney injury yung tawag natin is pre-renal causes so ano nga bang mga example nun okay for examples we have here um, number one blood loss yan yung ating pong halimbawa no uh, nagkaroon ng Hacking wound si patient. Nagkaroon ng injury. Okay? Nagkaroon ng open wound si patient. There is excessive or too much blood loss. Okay? So, nagkakaroon tayo dito ng decreased um, perfusion towards the kidney. And ang reaction niya normally no, ni kidney is that uh, it will activate the renin, angiotensin, and aldosterone system or the RAS system. So, it would also lead to the damage that we have in the kidney. So, ang cause niyan... Uh, that that example is a pre-renal cause of your acute kidney injury. The same also with your dehydration, kapatid. Okay? So, there is the, the main cause or the main problem that we have there is that there is a decreased renal blood flow. So, yan po talaga ang nangyayari. Okay. Pangalawa, we have your intrarenal causes. So, kapag sinabi din ang intrarenal, so the problem is inside the kidney. And that's it. Okay? So, along halimbawa nito, your tubular, tubular necrosis. Ayan. Okay? So, the tubular necrosis is an intrarenal cause of your acute kidney injury because the problem is occurring uh, inside the kidney. Your renal ischemia. Okay? And also your nephrotoxicity. Say, for example, uh, our patient have ingested or have consumed or have been administered all of those nephrotoxic medications. Okay, and it has caused uh, damage to the kidney and that's what we call as your intrarenal cause. Okay? And the last one, kapatid, is the post-renal uh, cause of your acute kidney injury, which obviously, we know this, everything that happens after the kidney. What are those? Bladder neck obstruction, cancer, calculi. Okay? It can be the inflammation that happened after our kidneys. So, ayan. If it can cause acute kidney injury, then the cause is post-renal cause of your acute kidney injury. Again, so when we say pre-renal, that's before the kidney. When we say inter-renal, that's inside the kidney or within the kidneys. And, of course, last is post-renal after the kidneys. These are the three causes 
of your acute kidney injury. So now that we know the causes, let's talk about the phases of your AKI or the phases of your acute kidney injury. So what are those? We have some phases of your acute kidney injury. We have actually three. Three main, but there is one that's actually part of the phases. However, we do not include them because it's basically the onset of everything. It's the onset of of, of everything that we have in your acute kidney injury. But it's included in the book. However, uh, there's nothing with it. It's not really that significant. However, when when the question asks you kapag sinabi po na dyan nagsisimula ang lahat, it's where everything starts, everything is precipitated, it's what we call as your onset phase. Okay? So, let's talk about your oligoric, diuretic, and then your recovery phase. Kapag sinabi nating oligoric phase, kapatid, from the word itself, oligoric. So, the root word there is, there's an oliguria. So, Kapag sinabi natin oliguria kapatid, that's basically decreased urine. Okay? That's basically urine, uh, decreased urination. Okay? So, decreased in, in your oligoric phase, there's a decreased urine output of less than 400 ml per day. So, that's just too much. Uh, that's, that, that's just too low. Okay? For our normal um, urine output per day. So, what happens here, it's because... Uh, there is an acute kidney injury and then the kidney cannot perform its function. So it's retaining more and more water. So there's what we call as your fluid retention. There's also fluid retention. Aside from that, there is a decreased urine output. So there is, because there is decreased urine output, so your body is retaining more and more water. There is also uremia. Okay, so remember that. And what happens is that there is metabolic acidosis. So again, why there is metabolic acidosis? We know that one of the functions of the kidney, guys, is the creation or the production of your bicarb. So because the the the, the kidney is now damaged and there is no, uh, there is nothing producing our bicarb. So what will happen? There would be acidosis. Okay, what type of acidosis? Metabolic acidosis. Okay. Also remember. Altered LOC will also happen, might also happen, and also coma is possible, and even death, mga kapatid. Pagalawang phase, we have your diuretic phase. From the word itself, if the first, I mean the second phase is uh, retaining more water, there is no much of your urine here, in diuretic phase, it's actually adversely occurring. So, there is the increased urine output here of 4 to 5 liters per day. Just imagine, mga kapatid, kanina dito, you're retaining more water. Dito naman ngayon, you are actually excreting your fluids. So, what happens to you? You will be dehydrated. And there is also a tendency of you, because of compensation, kapatid, no? Our heart would try to compensate. Okay? Try to circulate the remaining fluid that we have in the body. So, makikita po natin magkakaroon ng tachycardia si patient. Okay? So, also, we have last phase which is recovery phase. So, ang recovery phase naman po, we need to remember that it's a slow process. Okay? We need to remember that it's a slow process and uh, complete recovery may take 1 to 2 years and it's here wherein urine volume goes back to normal. From the word itself, it's something positive. Your patient is recovering and that's it. Okay? Huwag mo nang pahihirapan ang sarili mo. Oligoric phase, diuretic phase, and recovery phase. Okay? We know the phases of your acute kidney injury now. So, what are the assessments that, that's, uh, that, that can be seen in our patient? Okay. So, kapatid, our assessments or signs and symptoms will also be based on the phases that we have in your acute kidney injury. Okay, so let's start with your onset. In onset, it begins with precipitating events. And that's it. Yun lang yung sinasabi ng libro. Wala nang iba about your onset phase. Okay, most of the events happens in your um, happens in your oligoric phase, in your diuretic phase. Okay, and some of those in your recovery phase. Okay, so let's start with your oligoric phase. Kapatid, oliguria. Kasasabi lang natin kanina, there is a... A decreased urine output of even less than 400 ml per day. Here, what are our uh, assessments that are found in our patient? Increased BUN, and that's it. 
creatinine is increased, it's because our body is not excreting these nitrogenic substances, okay, or the, or these nitrogenic wastes. So, because our body is also responsible for the um, maintenance or the homeostasis of our electrolytes, so it's it's retaining more and more fluid. And aside from that, it's also retaining more and more electrolytes. So what happens to you? Hyperkalemia, hypernatremia, yan, hyperphosphatemia. So that's what happened to our patient. Hypermagnesemia. Everything is up except for one electrolyte and that's calcium. Why? Because one of the functions of your um, kidney is the creation of synthetic vitamin D. And vitamin D is responsible for the absorption of our calcium in the GI tract. So, dahil wala nang gumagawa nun kapatid, so, ang problema din natin is nagkakanta ng hypocalcemia. Okay, not to mention also, na dito, tumataas po si phosphate. Remember that your phosphate or phosphorus is inversely proportional with your calcium. Hypervolemia is also occurring. So, increased BUN and CREA, hyper electrolytes, everything except for calcium, and then hypervolemia occurs. Okay, so here, diuretic phase, kapatid, uh, is the next phase. And then, what are the assessments na makikita natin dito? There's a gradual decline of BUN and creatinine. Why? Because all of those uh, nitrogenic wastes is now... Uh, being excreted by our kidneys. So there's diuresis, or literally diuresis, literally increased urine output here. Hypovolemia may also occur, and also hypoelectrolytes. So lahat na, dahil linalabas na, diuretic phase na po tayo. So our patient here is actually very prone to uh, dehydration, so we must also take note of that. Last but not the least, kapatid, is your recovery phase. So, it's a recovery phase. It's where our patient starts to have an increased GFR and also or glomerular filtration rate and also have these starting to stabilize their blood urea and nitrogen and creatinine. Okay? So, these are your uh, assessments that can be found in every phases that we have. Ang pinakamahalaga dyan, classes, alam lang natin, oligoric phase, diuretic phase and then recovery phase and that's it everything will follow okay so now what are your interventions so first of course you monitor your vital signs to our patients marami pong interventions that can be um can be done to our patient but these are the most important and most notable no so monitor vital signs of course and also monitor intake and output and i have to take note of this ito yung lumalabas it should be hourly Okay, hourly monitoring of our uh, intake and output. And also, I have to take note this daily weight monitoring using same scale. And we need to take note that an increase of weight of 0 0.5 to 1 pounds per day indicates fluid retention. So, remember that one. Okay, remember that one, kapatid. Okay, monitor neurologic status. Why? Because uh, remember that... Uh, when our nitrogenic wastes goes up to your neuro system, and that's something dangerous. Okay, it might cause you harm, just like your asterixis, just like your coma. Okay, it may also kill your patient. Monitor also the lung sounds for crackles, and this is for your um, phase wherein you are retaining. For the oligoric phase, you are retaining more and more water. So we must be very careful in assessing our respiratory system because we might be uh harming our patient baka lang din naman no yung fluid ay maabot na sa ating lungs no so remember to always auscultate for lung sounds and take note for crackles okay now what's our diet low protein diet kapatid this is i have to highlight this one low protein why it's because specifically during the um oligoric phase we're in you are retaining more and more and more and more nitrogenic wastes so you, we don't need to increase more nitrogenic wastes from your protein so we make low protein diet and also kapatid this one is very important you prepare the patient for dialysis this is if this one is prescribed to avoid your azotemia or this is now the accumulation of your nitrogenic wastes which can be possible no uh lumalabas po ang mga symptoms niyan sa ating skin through our uremic frosts so azotemia or pinaka-dreadful dyan is mag-lead to 
coma. Okay, so what we are also avoiding why we need dialysis is your metabolic acidosis and this is a life-threatening condition. Okay, so we need to remember these things. Maraming salamat kapatid. Thank you for being with me on our discussion with your acute kidney injury. More and more, as we go along, tatawid po tayo sa ating chronic kidney disease or CKD.